Hello there. This hour on Fairbling, the next in my fluency fundamentals class. This is a class where we work on the basic vocabulary you need in important topics that will come up in your everyday life uh, and will help you gain your fluency. Today, we're going to work on fluency, talking about food, restaurants, specifically cooking. We're going to go over lots of vocabulary, give you a chance to try out some ordering and at a restaurant. And uh, we'll be comparing, uh, I guess, cooking and eating habits in different cultures as well. I'll have a little discussion about that. More about the class in just a minute. First, a quick introduction about me, and then we'll get started. I'm John Eric, your Verbling teacher for this hour. I'm an American teacher from New York, coming at you today from Lisbon, Portugal, to bring you this class. By the way, if you click on the link in the Verbling chat window or my name, Anywhere in the Verbally website, it'll take you here to my profile page. On the left, you can click follow, receive notifications of my upcoming group classes. And on the right, you can book a private tutoring session or a package, and I will work with you on creating a personalized learning plan to help get you to your goals. Okay? If you're interested, just send me a message before you book so I can make sure that there's plenty of time for you in my schedule. Let's take a look at the material for today. Now you can see it. I'll give you a link to this if you want to see it up close or download it. There it is. And I'll put a link in the Verbling chat window as well. Okay, and we will get started. Let me just make sure that your microphones are working. So let me say a quick hello to Mr. Vincent Dennis. Hello, Vincent, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. Vincent, where are you from? Uh, I'm from France. Uh, mm, Mop okay. Mop so Mop your name? Uh, I'm from Strasbourg in the northeast of the France. Strasbourg. So your name is not Vincent, your name is Vincent Dany. Vincent Dany. Yeah. Vincent Dany. Okay. Welcome to class. Thank you. Uh, Frederick? How are you today? Welcome back. Hello, hello again. This is the French class. Yeah, a lot we of just, French people. We need one more. We just need one more. Three. If I get three French people in a row, I get a prize. <laughs> I don't I know. Win a, I don't, a, a cookie. I win a cookie if I get three in a row. Come on, all you French people, come on in. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look at this picture before we begin. Take a look at the picture and tell me what you see. Mr. Vincent Dany, what do you see in the picture? Uh, so apparently it's a restaurant uh, with, uh, with a table, with cooker and, uh, and some guests and some customers. Um, okay. They are, we've, they already are, got some, we've already got yeah. some good vocabulary here. So I'm going to start putting this vocabulary in the chat window, which means that later on you might want to copy down these into your notes. So you said cooker, right? Yeah. Cooker is British English. Do you know what we say in American English? Uh, a chief. We say, you can say chef, like in French. Okay, but there's a difference between a chef and a cook. A cook okay. cooks the food. A chef creates cuisine, right? Okay. So chef is British or American. Cook is only American. Cooker is British, but cooker doesn't mean a person. Cooker means a piece of equipment. Be careful there, okay? Cooker okay. is the thing you cook on in British English. Okay, so we've got, you said uh, guests, I think you said? Yeah, guests or customers. Yeah, we'll call them guests at a restaurant rather than customers. It's okay to say customers, but um, in the hospitality industry, they like to use the word guests because it's okay. more hospitable. So guests, customers. Frederick, would you add anything from his description? Anything else? Um, look, look at the details now. What are the what are the cooks doing? What are the guests doing? What are they holding? The cooks cook uh, something that. Uh, that is a pancake, I assume. <laughs> they're, they're flipping 
pancakes, perhaps? Yeah. They're flipping it inside of a what? What's that thing he's flipping it? A pan. In a pan. In a frying pan, to be specific. Okay, they're flipping pancakes in a frying pan. So you got frying pans. Okay, what else? Any other details you notice? Um, <clears throat> we see uh, another cook uh, that uh, weighs... Um, hmm, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> what's, he, what's he doing in French? Sorry? Well, what's uh, he doing in French? Il flambe quelque chose. Flambe. Flambe. Right. In English, it's called flambe. Oh, okay. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the thing. Any word you say in French about food is used in English. Pretty much any word. Mm -hmm. Words for food, words for cooking. Because those are the words that we haven't lost, even today in modern English. The rest of the French words, either we don't use them or they mean something different. But gastronomy words are used all the time. So the cook on the right, he's flambéing something, right? Because you can see the flame. Uh, let me see. What else can we say? Oh, what is that? What is that white stuff coming off the top of the flambé, going up to the ceiling? What is that? The white stuff. Yeah. What? Well, you can see this outline of this white thing that's above the flame, above the heads of the chefs. Uh, it's some smoke? Is it smoke, though? Is it really smoke? Uh, uh, I don't know the, the word in, in English. Uh... I don't know the word in British either. I'm American. <laughs> What's the word in French? The, the, de la fumée? Fumé. So in English, it's fumes. 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 The reason why I say it's not smoke is because you're not burning wood. There's no, there's no fireplace there. The house is not on fire. So it's not mm -hmm. really smoke. It's fumes, just like in French, because this is about food. So when you cook, there are fumes. Uh, it could also be steam. If there's water, it could be steam. Maybe it's steam, maybe it's fumes. Okay, it depends. Fumes could be used for many things, but here I think that might be a good word. Okay, so we're going to be learning some vocabulary, two or three sets of words. I can't remember right now. I have to look. We're going to apply them to two or three different exercises, and then we're going to try to use them in a little speaking activity at the end to get you to activate what you've learned. Let's give it a try. Ways of cooking. What is that contraption on the left side of the screen? What is that thing called? Sorry, what, what is the question? What is that thing on the left side of the screen? Okay. It's a stove. It is a stove. And in British English, Vincent, Vincent. Vincent, Vincent, <laughs> Vincent. What is it in in British English? It's not a stove in British English. It's a cook. A cooker. It's a cooker. In British English. Okay. In American English, stove. You've got one, two, three, four, five words that you have to match up with the different parts of the stove. Let's see if you can do it. First. Repeat after me, just so I get you get the pronunciation. Some of these are easy. Bake. Repeat after me. Bake. Bake. Easy. Grill. 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 Good. Roast. 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 Good. Fry. 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 Good. Boil. 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 Careful with the L. Boil. Boil. Yeah. The good way to do it is boil, is don't actually make the L. Don't let your tongue touch the top of your mouth. Keep your tongue flat. It goes up, but then it goes flat. Boil, yo. Say yo, 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 boil. Boil. 
boyo. Boyo. That's it. Good. Notice there's a yo, there's a y sound. Boyo. Just like oyo. Oyo, boyo. Oyo, boyo. That's it. Good. Number one. What is number one? Let's take turns. Frederick, number one is a. Uh, number one. Number one is a. Um, what do you do? Where? Where do you do these things in the stove? You're gonna match up the action with the part of the stove. So what do you do on the top of the stove? Uh, fry. You can. You can fry. Well, okay. So number one could be fry. Okay. I agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fred, uh, Frederick Vincent. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say boil because you, you can boil some water. You can. You can boil water and you can fry an egg. So both number one and two, right? Boil and fry. Okay. Let's jump down to number three. Number three is something you have to pull out in the middle of the stove. Be careful because this is different than the thing at the very bottom. The thing at the very bottom is really big. Mm -hmm. In number three, you can make toast in number three. So what is number three? What is it or what can it do? Uh, I, th I think it can grill. It can grill, right? You can grill things there. So the grill allows you to, for example, make toast. But what else could you grill down there besides toast? You could make toast, put your bread in there. What else could you make? You can grill meat. You can put meat. So grill means that you're you're you know close to the heat. In this case, mm -hmm. you probably got a a coil on the top or maybe underneath and that's cooking it, rather than having direct contact. Below that, we've got number four. Oh, that should say number four and five, not number four and six. Made a mistake down there, sorry. Four and five. Okay. Also, number four and five, what do you think? So by elimination, you can roast and bake? You can roast and bake, okay. And what is the, what is the part of the stove where you roast and bake? Do you know? Do you know what it's called? Uh, it's no not idea. on the screen. It's not on the screen, but do you happen to know what that's called? I don't know. Frederick? Uh, sorry, what is the, the question? Where in the stove do you roast and bake? Roast and bake is correct, but where uh, in the stove do you roast and bake? What's the name of the part of the stove? Uh, oven. 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 O V E N. Ah, okay. No H at the beginning. No H. That's right. Okay. In fact, let me just refresh the page because I corrected that. That should have said five. And let's see. Now you can see the answers, right? Roast and bake at the bottom. And you'll see under bake, it says bake in the oven without oil, like cakes. Okay? By the way, there's a note down there. Food which is not cooked is raw, raw, raw food. Not crew, but raw, okay? So that's our first set of words, words about ways of cooking. Our next set is specifically about meat because you probably have to know how to, how to explain how you want things prepared. If, if you have a steak, actually, why don't you read that, Mr. Vincent? Read the, the let's read the the, uh, the description and then we'll match up the words to the pictures. Can you read the description for us? If you are steak, you can heat it raw. Rare. Rare. Cook okay. very quickly and still red. Medium rare. Cooked a bit longer and just red in the middle. Medium. Cooked not, a bit more and just pink. Not, not medium, but medium. Medium. Right. Or well done, cooked even longer, or not pink at all. Okay, very well done. <laughs> Frederick, do you think you can match up those four slabs of meat mm -hmm. with those four words? What do you think is the right order? 
Uh, green uh, is uh, rare. Okay. Okay. Green is rare. Okay. Mm, uh, red is mid medium rare. Red. Uh, I gotta go back to my pictures. Red is medium rare. Okay. Uh, medium is blue. Medium is blue. And well done is yellow or orange. No. Uh, something between yellow and orange. Yeah. I disagree just a little bit, uh, only because the picture is not that clear. But you're, you're, I see what you mean. If you look closely at the picture, you'll see that the green is a little bit less pink than the red one. So only for that reason, I disagree. Mm -hmm. But you're right. There's less. There's less cooked. It's a larger area, but it's actually a little bit less pink. So the medium rare, I would put on the top left. And the rare, I put it up right because it's a little bit pinker. Okay, but you got the right idea. So that's our second set of. I'm sorry, questions. No, no, no. It's very subtle. Uh, the picture. Of it's, um, it's. It's not it, easy to see um, what is raw, medium raw. Not raw, but rare. Rare. Yeah. Rare. Uh, yes, it depends on the color. Your, your how your color settings are on your computer. It's it's a. Uh, it's a little hard to see. On mine, it's really clear, but I have I've tweaked the colors on my computer, so it might be difficult. Anyway, it's not the best picture either. <laughs> but you get the idea. Well, the rare one is the one that is cooked less than medium rare. Okay. Our third set of words is all about describing food. So what I've done is given you some definitions and I've put the words at the bottom for you to match up. Okay, Let me just go through the vocabulary really quick. Repeat after me, just for pronunciation. And then let's see if you can intuitively match up the words. Okay, I'm going to go left to right, and I'm going to go clockwise. First word is fattening. 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 Good. Saudi. 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 Good. Notice that I say salty, not salty, because mm -hmm. I'm American, right? No, no T's in American English. They're all D's. Salty. For me, sorry, uh, in American English, you never uh, say T. You never say a T unless it begins the word, like okay. Tom. Okay. So the position of the letter is very important in all languages, actually. French as well. All languages, the position of the letter is very important. Mm -hmm. In Arabic, you actually write the letter differently depending on where it is in the word. Mm. In English, you don't, but you do say it differently. So T's are pronounced at the beginning like Tom, but they turn to D's. They soften in the middle, and they become D because it's difficult to maneuver your mouth to keep the T sharp, mm -hmm. uh, at, at least in the, in the American accent. It's difficult. L's follow the same rule. The L is pronounced at the beginning of a word, like uh, lollipop, but in the middle or the end of the word, it softens to a U sound, right? So uh, I should say not the beginning of a word, the beginning of a syllable. So. La, okay, no problem. La li, no problem, because li begins a syllable. But salt, I don't say salt, because it's too difficult to say the L and the T together. So the L becomes like a U sound. Saw, saw, salt, mm. saw the, saw the. Okay. Okay? Same with next word. Tasty. 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 Good. Okay. Going around. Spicy. 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 Bland. 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 Faddy. 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 Fresh. 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 Sweet. 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 Here I've got to say the T. Uh, if there was another word afterwards, I might not.
but there's no extra sound. There's no e at the end, so I can say sweet mm -hmm. because there's there's no extra syllable. If I put it next to another word, let's say I put it next to a word with a vowel, like apricot, sweet apricot, it becomes a D again because of the next word having a vowel. So if I say it fast, it'll be sweet day apricot, sweet apricot. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So it has to do with whether or not there is a extra syllable or if there's any kind of a vowel following it, A E I O U. Okay. The next word is tender. 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 Uh, and we did bland already. We've got it twice. Okay. Let's give it a try. You read the definition and decide which word is the best match. I'll tell you if you're right or wrong, or I'll give you a clue. Okay, Mr. Mr. Vincent, take the first one for us. Has lots of taste, a positive word, different, tasteless, a negative word. Not different, but it does. It should say does not equal. No, the opposite of the opposite of tasteless. The opposite of okay. What do you think? It's the opposite of tasteless, so it must be. Uh, uh, so it's uh, tasty. Tasty. Taste, tasty. Tasty. That's it. Yeah. Opposite of taste. Tasteless. Tasty. And it's a positive word, as in, "Hey, this sandwich is pretty tasty." Okay. okay. Frederic, second one. Without a strong taste, neutral in flavor. Not unnatural. Neutral. Neutral in flavor. Um, boiled rice. Um, hmm. It's not salty. It's not, not tasty. It's not tasty. It's not sweet. I'd say um, I'd say bland. 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 That's right. Bland. Uh, I don't know why I have bland listed twice. For some reason I do, but I'm not. I shouldn't have it listed twice there. I've got to get rid of that. Uh, in fact, let me erase one of the blands right now. Okay, I erased it a plan. So now I'll refresh the page, but I might be missing a word. But I got rid of one of the blands. There's only one bland here. Okay, we're back to Mr. Vincent for the third one. So lots of sugar, uh, opposite of bitter. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's sweet. Of course, it's sweet. That's easy. Frederick, the fourth. Lots of spice. Example. Lots of the fourth one, not the fifth, the fourth. Oh, sorry. Lots of salt. Uh, salty. Salty. Vincent? Lots of spice. Um, for instance, curry. Mm -hmm. Spicy. Mm -hmm. Spicy. Is there another way to say that besides spicy? You're right. Is there another way to say it? Mm. You could say that Thai food... Some people avoid Thai food because it's very blank and spicy. What's the blank? Oh, a synonym of spicy. A synonym of spicy? Uh, uh, it's hot? It's hot. chilly? Hot. Not chilly. Hot. Okay, hot. That's it. So hot and spicy means one meaning of hot is spicy. Another meaning of hot is, of course, with temperature. Okay, so Frederic, we're on to recently produced. Recently produced, um, for instance, fresh bread. Recently picked, fresh fruit. Um, fresh. Fresh, pretty easy because it keeps saying fresh, yeah. right? Vincent, third, third to last. Easy to cut. A positive word used to describe meat. Um. Tender. Tender is the opposite of tough. Good. Okay, Frederick. Meat with a lot of fat. Um, fatty. Fatty. The opposite of? Lean. Lean. Lean and fatty. Okay. Vincent, the last one. Uh, so lean is a synonym of uh, um, light? Nope. Not yeah. really. Oh, oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. It, depending on what you're consuming, it's light. Yes, that's mm -hmm. true. If it's if it's a soft drink that contains sugar, uh, Coca-Cola Light or something will have less sugar. 
Yeah. yeah. Okay. If it's meat, we don't say light. Okay. So it has more to do with how much sugar or fat, if it's like processed food, like yogurt, you can have light or low fat. So yeah, it's gotta be kind of processed. If it's a natural thing like meat, we wouldn't say light. But yes, oh. that, that's right. You can say also diet food, no? Diet? Yeah, yeah, light diet. The, the, they tend to be for processed foods, though, rather than natural ones like meats. And what about the last one, uh, Vincent? Food which makes you put on weight, um, get fat. Example, cream, biscuits, etc. Uh, so it's fatty? Nope. That was the one before. That was that was lots of fat is fatty. Uh, food yeah, that yeah. food that makes you fat is uh, fattening. Fattening, right? To fatten is to make something fat. Okay. To fatten. In the old days, people used to keep a turkey or a goose, and they would fatten up the goose and kill it to have in Christmas dinner. Thus, the Christmas carols, Christmas is coming, the goose is getting fat, blah, 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 blah. I don't remember the song, but I remember that line. Fattening is when you deliberately make something fat. So, by the way, Vincent, repeat after me. Biscuits. Biscuits. There's Yeah, it looks like biscuit, but we don't pronounce the ooh, so it's biscuits. Biscuits. That's right, biscuits. Okay, that is our third. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to review, the answers are here on slide eight. I always put the answers after the presentation. So there on slide eight. Okay, and let's switch tactics here for a moment. I've put a bunch of keywords that you would likely use when describing a restaurant. I want you to tell me what is a meal what a meal is like in the English speaking world were oh my god help me out here <laughs> I want you to tell me what a meal is like in the English speaking world using these words I want you to describe the process of going out and eating in a restaurant I want, I want you to try to use as many of those words as you can mm -hmm. okay so okay. Want to give it a try, Frederick? Feeling brave? Uh, yes, let's try. Um, so first, you have to to book in advance. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> We're not going to interrupt you. You're mm -hmm. going to you're going to speak for sixty seconds with no interruptions. See how many of those words you can use, and then we'll give Vincent a try. Okay. Are you ready, Frederick? Okay. And you can reuse the one you use, okay? Your time starts now. Okay, um, so if you want to go to the restaurant, you first have to book in advance. So you have to, to phone. And <clears throat> then uh, when you arrive to the restaurant, maybe you have first uh, appetizer. And then you, you have um, uh, aperit uh, aperitif, aperitif, okay. Uh, no, sorry. First you have aperitif, and then you have uh, appetizer or starter. <laughs> uh, then you have uh, hmm, the twenty seconds left. Okay. Then you have the main course, mm -hmm. and then the dessert. So you have not to, to pay the bill uh, and leave a, a tip, of course, for the waiter or the for the waiter. And uh, you have to Time's remember. Thumbs up. up. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> These are the words I heard you say: book, aperitif, appetizer, main course, dessert, bill, tip. Uh, dessert, main course, book. Yes waiter you use which is good I'll give you extra credit for that so I saw one two three four five six seven I'll give you extra credit for waiter because that's a good keyword as well so I'm counting eight keywords altogether okay eight keywords uh, 
Yeah, okay. Mr. Vincent, your challenge is to try to use more than eight keywords to talk about the last time you went to a good restaurant. So now you're going to use the past tense to talk about your own experience. You're going to try to describe it, and you've got to try to beat Frederick's eight words. You've got to try to use at least nine. Are you up for the challenge, Mr. Vincent? Yeah, of course. <laughs> your time starts. Wait. Wait for it. Three, two, one. Go. So when you want to go to a restaurant with friends, uh, to avoid a fully booked restaurant, you have to book in advance. Uh, after when you arrive in the restaurant, uh, when you are, because you are thirsty, you, you have to take an aperitif. Mm -hmm. Then um, you, you are beginning to, to be a little bit starved, so you, you take an, uh, an appetizer, a starter, sorry. Um, then the, you want to, to go on your, your meal, so you take a course, an amazing course. Uh, so after you have to to pay uh, to pay the bill, so you you call the waiter to to check the bill. Uh, so you you ask uh, to her if the service is included or not. Ten seconds. Uh, and after you no no before you take a decent because you are a little bit uh, star again and uh, and you 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 take you let a, a, a tip. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Let's see if you beat him. Let's see. I'll, I'll, I'll put the words that I heard you say in the chat window right now. I heard you talk about booking, aperitif, appetizer or starter, main course, bill, waiter, dessert, and I heard you talk about the service being included. So that is eight. You are tied with Frederic. Eight and eight. Tie score. Oh, we need a tiebreaker. By the way, Vincent, can you take an aperitif? Can you take an aperitif? Is there a better verb we could use instead of take? Um, it's, isn't that correct? You can take an aperitif? You cannot take an aperitif. You know why? Because if you take it, you're going to get arrested. They're going to call the police. They're going to say, give that aperitif back. You can't take it. If you take it, you're stealing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so what are you? What should you do, Frederick? Have. You should have. Okay. We always have plus food or have plus a meal. That's the formula. We have lunch. We don't lunch. We have breakfast. We don't breakfast. We have an aperitif. We don't take an aperitif. Mm. We have a coffee. We don't drink a coffee. It's always with have in English for food. So that's a good lesson to keep in mind. Okay? So we wouldn't take an aperitif. We'd have an aperitif, have a starter, have the main course, ask for the bill, see if service is included. That was good. Uh, talk to the waiter, wait staff, or server. You could have said server instead of waiter because server is a gender neutral term. So now we say that a lot. We don't say waiter and waitress anymore, really. They're kind of old terms. Uh, and have a dessert as well. Uh, what else? Book a table. Okay. So tie score. We'll come back. Here on this page, I... Oh, why is that? This is outdated. Let me update that. There we go. Here on this page, you can see an example similar to the one that you just did. Frederick, could you just read our example for us? Mm. In Britain, you often have three courses, a starter, for instance, soup, a main course, for instance, steak or chicken, and a dessert, strawberries or ice cream. Ice cream. You may also have an aperitif, a drink before the meal, gin and tonic. Yeah, gin and tonic. And coffee after the meal. When you pay the bill, uh, the money for the meal. You or sometimes check, or, or check, check in American English. Check. Check. American English. Check, please. In British English, I want to pay the bill. Okay. You sometimes also leave a tip, money, for the waiter if service is not included. Included. Included in the price. 
10% as a normal tip. What? That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is not right. No, start over. In America, if you tip 10%, you're going to be, there's, they're going to, the management's going to have a talk with you. 15% is the right amount. Okay. And if it was especially good or you like the wait staff, you give 20%. Whoa. Right? 20% is not abnormal at all. Mm -hmm. Less than 15%, there's something wrong. You're, 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 you're signaling that you're not pleased with something. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. Okay. Okay, but it, it, this is not some some something that is uh, um, uh, um, uh, this is not a a, a rule. It is it's a not, rule. Yes, it's a rule. Okay. It is a rule. It's not written down, but the entire culture knows it. So it's an unwritten rule, but one that you can ask any American. Ask anybody. There's 320 million of us. Ask anyone and they'll tell you the same thing, even though it's never written down anywhere because mm -hmm. everyone knows that that's the rule. Okay. If you give 10%, you're signaling that you're unhappy. If you give zero, that means that you know, you're ready to call the city hall and report, uh, call the health inspector or something. You know? mm -hmm. Just so you know, and in, in British in the British culture, okay, it's different. You don't leave the percentage. It's there's no percent in, mm -hmm. you know, it's Europe, so it's different. But I'm telling you this because in America, I know this because it happened to me. In America, you receive a waitering wage. So instead of receiving receiving minimum wage, I don't know what it is today, but it used to be two dollars and ninety cents an hour. So if minimum wage is $15 an hour, that's what it's supposed to be. I don't think it actually is. I think it depends on where you live. I don't think there's a – I can't remember uh, what where – because they were trying to pass a federal minimum wage, and I don't know mm -hmm. what happened with it. They're trying to get it to be $15 an hour throughout the country. I don't think it passed. Some places accepted it. Some places didn't. So the minimum wage is probably between – I don't know, eight fifty, some places fifteen in other places. Mm -hmm. Fifteen is about normal because of the cost of living these days. But it, when I was when I was in university and I did some of this waitering and bartending, we would receive two dollars and ninety cents an hour because the government knew that we'd get tips. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we weren't taxed on two dollars and ninety cents. We were taxed on what we got tipped. So that means we were taxed on receiving something like $10 an hour. That's what our tax payments had to be. If you declared, and if you didn't, you took your chances. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, if it is a popular restaurant, you may also need a, to book a table in advance before you go. Okay, that's it. One, just repeat one word for me. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not dessert, but dessert with a Z. And the second syllable, dessert. Dessert. Good. Because the other thing is a desert, which is yeah. spelled with one S. Desert, dessert. Dessert. All right, very good. Vincent, how would you order from this menu? How would you actually go about ordering the food on this menu if you were at a restaurant? So I have to, to read the menu? Well, not read it, but order from it. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so um, for starters, uh, I, would, uh, I would have um, a homemade chicken liver pate. Oh, very good. Yeah, for the main courses, um, Maybe uh, a mushroom risotto. Oh, risotto is good. And for the dessert, uh, uh, a chocolate mousse. Uh, I'm quite crazy about chocolate. So. <laughs> You're a chocoholic. Yeah, exactly. A chocoholic. Okay, good. Only one change I would make, just the verb tense. If you're actually at a restaurant, right, mm -hmm. you, you'll use the verb will. To indicate that it's a future, I will uh, have. I'll have. have. I'll have. I have. 
right? Because the question you're going to be asked is, what will you have? Uh, even if they don't say that, that's the implied question. So the answer is always, I'll have. Okay, so I'll have, I'll have the homemade chicken liver pate for starters. For the main course, I'll have the, what did you say, the risotto? Uh, yeah. and perhaps a chocolate mousse for dessert. So two things to recall. I'll have, with will, I'll have, and four. Four starters for the main course for dessert. Okay? Frederick, what, what would you have? The same or different? Uh, well, I'll have um, tagliatelle with uh, courgette, cream, and bacon. Uh, then for the main course, I'll have. Um, hmm. May I may I recommend the salmon today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I don't like sp uh, spinach. You don't mm. like spinach. Spinach, yeah. Ah, well, I'll tell you what. Maybe we could do a side of new potatoes, roasted new potatoes to go oh, with yes. your. Because this is a uh, this is fresh Chilean uh, fresh Chilean salmon. Uh, that was imported especially for our French customers. Okay. So I, 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 I don't know why it's from Chile. I just mm -hmm. made that up. Mm -hmm. but anyway, so I'd highly recommend it. And we'll see if we can give you a different side. And will you be having a dessert today? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I have a fruit salad, please. A fruit salad. Okay. We have excellent fruits <laughs> from all over the world. From Chile? No. Uh, no, not Chilean fruits. Uh, these these fruits are from Antarctica. It's a very unusual fruit salad. It's very cold. I don't know. I don't know. I can't. I have no idea what, even what goes in a fruit salad. Very good. So I'll have N4. Two keywords that you'll need. Let's see if we can test your vocabulary. Do you often eat the following food in your country? If so, do you eat it in the same way? For example, in Britain we often eat fish but not usually raw fish because in Britain they have fish and chips which means that the fish is it's, a, this, it's not on the screen but the fish is deep fried and breaded deep fried and breaded because you know it has that crust around it right mm. kind of like a breading so fish and chips I want you to pick something on the screen and tell us how you have in your country, and we'll see if we can compare. Okay, so what comes to mind right away, Vincent, out of these things? Uh, about fried eggs, uh, we don't have a lot of fried eggs in France. Um, we eat eggs um, more raw. Um, raw. <laughs> I don't know the the words for for different uh, different. Yeah, let's let's find out. Food. Let's find out. You describe it, and I'll tell you the word. Sorry? You describe it, and I'll tell you the style of okay, the way okay, it's prepared. Okay. So it's um, uh, a, a, a tough, tough egg, you know? Okay, so that's called hard-boiled. Hard-boiled. Hard-boiled is when it's... When it's uh, okay. It's almost solid, or pretty much solid. Okay. Yeah? Uh, a hard-boiled is usually kept inside of the shell. Inside of? The inside shell? of the shell. You know what I mean by the shell? The egg shell? Uh, no. Frédéric, what's an egg shell in French? A coquille. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like cookie. Coquille. 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 Coquille, oui. Coquille, oui. OK, got it. No, no, pas coquille, oui. Coquille. <laughs> <laughs> coquille, oui. It's that Japanese food. Coquille, oui. It's not uh, like Japanese food, but it's not Japanese food. And how, how would you say hard-boiled in French, Frédéric? Les œufs durs. Un œuf dur. Dur. Dur, yes. Ah, uh, so... Hard. Uh, hard, dur. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a few styles of eggs. And let's see if you can understand what I mean. Since we talked about fried eggs, let's talk about different ways to prepare them. Okay? So, sunny side up. 
Sunny side up. Sunny side up. It, it, it's like like the picture in the right of. Uh... Precisely. That's it. Sunny side up. Devolt. I'll, I'll write this in the chat window so you can see it. Devolt. <coughs> Sunny side up. It's uh, Vincent. Tell me if you if you uh, if you agree. It's uh, Lizopla. We use it. Oh, yeah. Say that again for me, Frédéric. Des œufs au plat. Des œufs au plat. Oeuf, un œuf au plat. Yep. Au plat mean, uh, means uh, um, in the pan. Ah, okay. Oh, au, au plat. Oh, like in. Ah, okay. Mm. But, but in English, there is a different word no, for, for all these preparations. Yeah, there's a different word for each. So, the œuf. Uh, Oeuf au plat. Ah, eggs on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> you see, it sounds so sophisticated, and then you realize it's just eggs on the plate. Like, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> like, like my cousin Vinny could make. Hey, put the eggs on the plate. Yeah, yeah. You know, in France, in France, you you have a lot of uh, very sophisticated name for for the the, the meal, but it's just uh, you know boiled rice or, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I would like the uh, salmon fumé, you know, and that's just like, you know, yeah. smoked salmon. Well, actually, that doesn't sound so bad. That sounds okay. But eggs on a plate is pretty funny. What about deviled eggs? What do you think a deviled egg is? Deviled. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, it's um, it's scrum, scr uh, crumbled, crumbled eggs, eggs? That's different. That's scrambled, like this. Scrambled. Oh, yeah. Is it is it just related to the way they they cook it, or um, or, or um, there is something else uh, with the egg? There usually is a, an, an extra ingredient in deviled eggs. Usually there's paprika. Ah yes, okay. Uh, no, uh, it doesn't exist in, in in France. So a deviled egg will be a hard boiled egg, but the yolk which is the yellow part, the yolk. You have egg white, egg white, and you have yolk. The yolk is yellow. Okay? So the yolk is like taken out and mixed with a kind of, I don't remember if it has like a mayonnaise or something, and it has paprika on, on top. So it's kind of like they take the yolk and they turn it into a kind of a filling, and then it's put back inside the egg white, and the egg white is hard-boiled. That's called a deviled egg. C'est les je crois. Oui, mais il n'y a pas de paprika dans les œufs Mais oui, tu as raison. Oui, ça, ça, ça ressemble à ça. Ouais. Okay, so you have that too. Uh, something, some, something uh, uh, similar. Uh, les œufs uh, mimosa. Mi mimosa. Oui. Oh, I'm not sure ah, about mimosa. No. You say that too. Okay. But for the, for us, that means a mixture of champagne and orange juice, a mimosa. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> mimosa. Um, so we've got, what do we have? We, we've talked about deviled, scrambled, hard-boiled. Here's one that's funny. Remember Sunny Side Up? What about over easy? Over easy. I want my eggs over easy. Uh. <laughs> want to take a guess? Yeah. I would say it's not really, it's uh, quickly cooked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That means that the eggs are still liquid, liquidy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very you good. You can put some, some bread to, uh, to dip in, in That's it. That's it. That's oh, okay. exactly right. Yep. Yep. That's it. And you might, you might want to specify that you want your eggs over easy, but not runny. Not runny. So that, that means that it's going to be cooked slightly more so that the egg white is really firm, but that the egg is still liquidy, if that makes sense. Okay. So runny is a bad thing. Over easy is a good thing. Eau à la coque. Yeah, are you sure that's right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But cock is the rooster, isn't it? Or the the, the No, cock is uh, um, an, uh, another word for coquille, for the the shell. Ah, 
the shell. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> now wait a second. That's that's a little different, though. I think you're talking about eggs Benedict. Co uh, it's what, what you have around the, the eggs are. The shell, the shell, S H E L. Yeah. But hey, hang on one second. Rooster is a uh, like this. Uh, I don't know if I... Cook. Oh, okay, spelled differently. Mm. Uh, but hang on j just a second because oh no no I'm making a mistake. Benedict is different. Okay, no, we're good. We're good. So that's all I can think of right now. Sunny side up. Over easy, deviled, hard boiled. Um, if you've got hard boiled, you can have soft boiled as well. I guess I should point that out. You can have soft boiled, which means uh, we don't really say that too much in American English. So I guess soft boiled is. I don't know if soft boiled is in the shell or not. Give me a second. Let me double check. Give me a second here. Soft boiled. So soft boiled is just hard boiled, but not so much. I guess it's it's not necessarily in the gel. Okay, and that's it. That's all I can think of. So now you've got some good words. Sorry, uh, John. I I I made a mistake. I I didn't mean uh, roaster, but rooster. So <laughs> yeah, this is very really not the same thing. I'm I'm dyslexic enough that I didn't even notice, so no problem. <laughs> rooster, rooster, it's all the same to me. Uh, very good, very good. So we've got lots of great words for eggs. I'm just curious if there's any other words on the list that stand out for you as something done in a particular way in your country or culture, or if you've been to a place where they prepare it in a special way, like for example. Uh, you know, you've got the rotisserie beef in Brazilian culture when it's on a big spindle going around, something like that. Is there anything on this list that stands out for you as being done in a particular way in a particular place? Mm. For me, for example, roast peppers in Italy, they like their roast marinated peppers with a good olive oil, so that might be something different. The ro what, what did you say? The roast peppers? Roast peppers, like in Italy, that's like a kind of a of a starter that you can get. Roast peppers. Okay. Uh, well. Uh, or anything not on the list that comes to mind. I'm just curious. But we we, we eat uh, a lot of str strange thi things. <laughs> like what? Like <laughs> like, what? like snails. Uh, there's snails here too. Oh. So, in America, we call that escargot. Yeah, and, and you eat escargot? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> in a French restaurant, we do. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, uh, fro fro it, frog legs. It, it, frog legs. Never in a million years. That's horrible. You should be put in jail for that. It's, <laughs> how, 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 are all, how are all those frogs going to get to work if you eat their legs? It's impossible. No, Not no. fair. You know, um, I maybe uh, uh, it's one uh, it fro uh, frog legs uh, maybe only once. Yeah. <laughs> we don't used to eat frog legs uh, every day. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it tastes it uh, it tastes like um, like chicken. Of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, really. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> what doesn't taste like chicken? Uh, yeah, but but what does the frog do when you take off its legs? And you've got a frog with no legs. It's a very, very sad frog. Mm, you can make a wallet or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> do you throw the frog back in the water? You just let him sink to the bottom because he's got no legs to swim with? It's not fair. It's not fair. Okay, so you've got escargot, you've got frog legs. You have but oysters. Oysters, too. classic. Yeah. That, that's a big thing in America. People love yeah, oysters. You, you eat that? Uh, you you eat uh, some cooked oyster, no? No, no, raw oysters. Raw, raw, oh, raw okay. oysters, always. And okay. it can it can kill you. <laughs> Sorry. It, it can it can kill you. You have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
be pretty careful about where you have your raw oysters. But absolutely, in in New York or major cities, yeah, absolutely, people have that all the time. So you've got to just be careful where you have them. Okay, I'll, uh, I'm just curious if there's a particular food from a particular from the place where you were born or from your city. I was born in a place called Philadelphia. Have you ever been to Philadelphia? Yes. Yeah. Have you really? Yes, sure. Yeah. Why? <laughs> oh, yeah, there is a famous uh, movie. Movie, and, yeah. Um, yeah. I know, but I said, have you ever been there? Ah, uh, no, 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 never. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, why would you want to go there? <laughs> uh, Philadelphia is famous for the soft pretzel. I, I kind of grew up more in New York, but I was born in Philadelphia. The soft pretzel, which is... Uh, which is because there was a massive influx of German immigrants about 200 years ago. So the soft pretzel, by the way, I'll show you a picture of it because you have to just see it to believe it. I'm going to call it the Philly soft pretzel. When I, and the soft pretzel is unique because it's the size of your head. Let me show you a picture. Uh, I want to see if I can get a picture of a person next to one of these I, things. Because I live in Strasbourg, so I have the same, exactly mm -hmm. the same mm -hmm. in my, my region. Oh, yeah? Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly the same, yeah. Exactly the same. But yeah. the, the ones, I'm trying to see, uh, there's a picture of one next to a person. They're huge. They're gigantic. Uh, I'll show you one other thing, which I can guarantee you, you're not going to find anywhere else because it's impossible. The Philadelphia cheesecake, one of the most disgusting foods you can possibly imagine. And there you go. That is a cheesesteak. See it? It looks like a little bit fatty, no? <laughs> it's, it's, on, it's, it's not usually on this kind of bread. It can't be. But it's sliced meat with like processed cheese, peppers and onions. And you can eat two of them before you have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> and there were two famous places when I was growing up uh, Gino's and Pat's let's go to Pat's Pat's Philly cheesesteak uh, here you can see Pat's this is in South Philadelphia this is an old picture let me see if I can get a, a more up to date picture oh this is Gino's this is the other one so this is in the Sicilian part of Philadelphia anyway and let's see if I can show a picture of specifically one of theirs because you want to see the real thing. Uh, none of these. Uh, uh, I can't see which is which. Anyway, these are some these are some foods particular to the area. You know, if you go to New Orleans, you've got like Zydeco culture, uh, Haitian culture. So you've got. Things like you've got all that Haitian cuisine or the New Orleans cuisine. So you've got gumbo <laughs> with this kind of like stew, spicy okay. New Orleans stew. And there's a lot of crawdad they serve down there. Crayfish, crawdad. I think you spell it. Okay, they say crawfish here, but it's crawdad, crawfish. These little tiny freshwater lobsters, they're very small. Uh, Ecrevis. Uh, oh. so in French, in French is Ecrevis, I think. Ah, uh, okay. These are uh, these are usually usually fresh water. I, I I guess I'm not sure if they can be salt water, but I'm pretty, I know they're in rivers, uh, or mm -hmm. like in deltas. So you got the Mississippi Delta down there. So it's probably yeah. You, know, you can see them being murdered uh -huh. <laughs> with corn. So I'm just. Know. A genocide, a little crawl dad genocide. I'm just curious, uh, is there something particular to the place where you're from, your city or your town? Mm, I was born in the uh, southwest, southwest of France. Uh, yes, there is a, a, a place that um, that's it. Uh, it is Cassoulet. Cassoulet. A cassoulet. Ah. Cassoulet, yes. This is uh, uh, there is a lot of meat 
a lot of um, uh, beans. Ah, also. okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it, it's a little what? bit like a stew. Like a, sorry? It's a little bit like a stew. It's like a bean stew, a bean and meat yes. stew. Okay, very good, very good. There is also another, another meal in the southwest, uh, very famous in France, but I think it's pre prohibited in America. It's uh, the foie gras. Fatty foie, foie gras. <laughs> yeah. and, but, and but I think... Um, sorry, go ahead. Two years ago, it was it was banned no? in America, no? in the United States. Uh, it could be. I, I, I haven't been back since 2007, so I'm not sure what's going on over there these days. <laughs> it could be. Uh, why was it banned? <clears throat> because they want to be uh, to be mean uh, with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, well, because it's uh, it's very uh, uh, cruel. The way oh, yeah. they, they oh uh, right right they right, they right. They, uh, they, uh, they give uh, uh, feed, they feed the, the yes animal. the way they feed the the the, the, the duck the wa is very very rude right right <laughs> it's very yeah. rude it's very impolite <laughs> very impolite yes very rude <laughs> we should be much more polite when you're feeding your duck <laughs> yes you you have to uh, say uh, please. Uh, can you exactly. eat this kind of food, please? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Now that you mention it, I think I know what you mean. So it's it's force feeding, as you can see up here. They force feed it, which is not nice at all. Look at that nice duck. Oh, look at that nice duck. Well, mm, you mean? <laughs> look at that nice yummy duck. <laughs> uh, and it goes back to the time of the ancient Egyptians. So we've been being nasty to ducks for quite a long time. Uh, on that note, uh, I'm going to be polite and I'm going to take my leave of you. But I want you to I want you to make sure that you go out and order uh, one deviled egg, one sunny side up egg, right, and one egg over easy, and confuse the the confuse the people at the restaurant. I want you to do that today. See what they bring you back. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> See what happens. Um, and don't forget, we've borrowed the omelette from French. We stole yeah. that from you. Mm, sure. So, so, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you invented it. We made it famous. Actually, you probably made it famous. So I shouldn't say you're welcome. But thank you for that. And we will give you the sunny side up and the over easy. Okay, so try that out today. See what they bring you when you ask for it. Okay? Okay. Take a, take a picture of it. Take your take a little selfie and then show it in class tomorrow. Okay? Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. For now, I'll say foie gras and see you tomorrow. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye. <laughs> oh, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. bye.